Welcome, dear friends, to the service for Sunday, the 21st of January, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. I do pray that we will all be blessed as we spend this time together. Looking at the parish, the birthdays on the 26th of January, Rowan Tor, we wish you a very happy birthday and pray that the year ahead will be blessed. Anniversaries on the 25th of January, Peter and Ruth Chikora celebrate their wedding anniversary. And the 26th of January, Evan and Maria and Kuna celebrate their wedding anniversary. Congratulations, and we do pray that there would be many more to come. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned. I stand amazed, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. In your presence, Lord. And I wonder how he could love me, a sinner. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday after the Epiphany. Let us pray. O God of new beginnings, give us courage to turn and joyfully follow you into new adventures of faithful service. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 and verse 10. Jonah obeys the Lord. Once again the Lord spoke to Jonah. He said, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to the people the message I have given you. So Jonah obeyed the Lord and went to Nineveh a city so large that it took three days to walk through it. Jonah started through the city, and after walking a whole day, he proclaimed, In forty days, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, so they decided that everyone should fast, and all the people, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth to show that they had repented. God saw what they did. He saw that they had given up their wicked behavior, so he changed his mind and did not punish them as he had said he would. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 62, verses 5 to 12. Nevertheless, my soul... Wait in silence for God, for from Him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my strong tower, so that I shall not be moved. 
In God is my deliverance and my glory. God is my strong rock and my shelter. Trust in him at all times, O my people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. The children of men are but breath. The children of men are a lie. Place them in the scales and they fly upward. They are as light as air. Put no trust in extortion. Do not grow worthless by robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard him say that power belongs to God, that to the Lord belongs a constant goodness, for you reward a man according to his works. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 to 31. What I mean, my brothers, is this. There is not much time left, and from now on, married men should live as though they were not married. Those who weep, as though they were not sad. Those who laugh, as though they were not happy. Those who buy, as though they did not own what they bought. Those who deal in material goods as though they were not fully occupied with them. For this world, as it is now, will not last much longer. Hear the word of the Lord. The good news is proclaimed in the first chapter of St. Mark, beginning at verse 14. Glory to Christ our Saviour. After John had been put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news from God. The right time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, Come with me, and I will teach you to catch people. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little farther on and saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat and getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this morning's Gospel reading, we join Jesus along the shores of the Sea of Galilee. This is not really the sea as we know it. This was a beautiful lake, almost 213 meters below sea level, about 23 kilometers long, and 10 kilometers wide. The lake was shaped like a harp. It was fed by the waters of the upper Jordan River and it was also called the Lake of Gennesaret and the Sea of Tiberias. In Old Testament times it was known as the Sea of Kinnereth its waters, reflecting the blue of the sky above, was clear, transparent, and sweet to the taste, while all sorts of fish, 
largely contributed by the numerous streams that entered it, abounded in it. The margin of the lake was surrounded by a level beach, here covered with smooth sand or small shells, there strewn with coarser shingle and discernible as a white line encompassing the lake. This beach, so often mentioned in the Gospels, while bathed on one side by the bright waters of the lake, was fringed on the other, in many parts by shrubs and oleanders with their rosy red blossoms. It was in this setting that Jesus called his first four disciples. Simon and Andrew were actually engaged in fishing when Jesus called them. James and John were mending, or rather preparing, their fishing nets. Here we observed the correct use and proper economy of time. When not actually engaged in the labours of our calling, we may do much in preparing for it, either taking necessary rest and refreshment for our bodies, and so acquiring vigour by repose, or in getting our apparatus or equipment of whatever kind in readiness for the resumption of work. We also observe ready and unreserved compliance. As soon as Jesus said, follow me, as the original words literally mean, these four brethren, James, John, Simon and Andrew, immediately obeyed the summons. St. Mark's words here, they went away or they went off behind him, are very expressive and imply the completeness with which they separated themselves from previous connections and severed themselves from past pursuits. Completeness is also seen from the devotion with which they joined their new master and commenced their new calling. They do not seem to have given much thought as to how they would maintain themselves at the time or in the future, or to have counted the cost of the sacrifice they were called to make. Neither did they consult with relatives or friends. They left all at once and forever. They abandoned their boats and nets, which are likely to have been of small value or little worth, but nonetheless, to these fishermen the sacrifice must have been great, for it involved ridding themselves of all their worldly possessions. Times of persecution may separate us from the nearest relatives and dearest friends, for unless we love Christ more than the nearest and dearest, we are unworthy of him. Still, such cases are exceptional. Here a beautiful event is brought to our notice by St. Mark. John and James, when leaving their father Zebedee to follow their master, were not forgetful of the claims of filial piety and natural affection. They did not leave their aged father helpless, but with the hired servants. From this, the obvious inference is that he would be able to still continue his ordinary business and pursue his usual avocation as he had done before. True religion, instead of cutting the ties of kinship, as a rule, consecrates them. Obeying a calling necessarily means separation. We cannot have any calling without separation. The merchant must separate himself from the easy chair and the book, the student from society, the soldier from home. One main occupation is enough for most men. Few can properly pursue the ministry and business at the same time. 
The calling implies a caller, not our fancy, whim, passion, but divine will. To some, that will is made known clearly and directly. It is unmistakable. Here, St. Paul comes to mind. To many others, divine will comes not so directly. True thought is God realizing himself in us. True action is God willing to do it in and through us. Never resist a pure impulse. Never turn from a voice that speaks to what is disinterested in you. To take a higher way of life always means giving up a lower. God confounds our avarice by his generosity. We cling to all we can hold. We want to keep incompatible things. To be learned, but not to be poor. To have as much of the world as possible, yet not be worldly. To live in self-indulgence, yet earn the reputation of saints. But God teaches us that our surrenders are no less profitable than our seeming gains. The provincial fisherman becomes the apostle to the world. The things that are unseen are more than all that are seen. The ordinary work of men and the extraordinary are here put in the same line, not one higher than the other. Christ chooses common men, workmen, for his intimate disciples. What link could there be between the transcendent task of apostleship and that humble calling in which they were engaged? Jesus alone saw a connection, and not merely a fanciful one. He indicated it and proceeded upon it. The resemblance he suggested is broad and deep. It was while they were working that he called them. To pass from our current stage to becoming a true disciple of Christ is only possible through obedience, self-sacrifice and a closer fellowship with Christ. Even as he calls the four disciples, their preparation and discipline have already begun. Obedience demands that we are to go once, if at all, without question, and finally. Self-sacrifice was begun by leaving all and following Christ, and as Peter phrased it, the will of the flesh, the will to live, the whole self-life had to be renounced. Our lives had to be in fellowship with the Christ. This would compensate for every toil and trial, but it would also necessitate continual exercise of sympathy, spiritual insight and resolute fidelity. Our trust in Christ as disciples is never misplaced. He never gave us the idea that he does not add a promise to encourage us to help us in our performance. If he bids us to come to him, however weary and worn, sad and suffering and sorrowful we may be, he promises to give us rest. If he bids us to take his yoke upon us, he assures us it will be light. If he bids us seek, he promises we shall find. If he urges us to ask, he promises we shall receive. If he presses us to knock, he pledges his word that it shall be opened to us. And so on. Therefore it is here, when he summons them to forsake their humble occupation as fishermen, he gives them the appropriate and characteristic promise to make them fishers of men. If we call ourselves Christians, then we must all necessarily feel the call to be true disciples of Christ. 
But what does this mean for us when things begin to fall apart in our world? What is our calling when we fail to take steps to prevent suffering and cruelty war brings? Are we not denying the presence of God in the victims when we turn a blind eye to the misery of others? Is it not a most severe indictment on our world when only one country sees fit to hold another responsible for war crimes? How will we eventually shield ourselves from the piercing glare of the eye of judgment that must one day cast its gaze on all of us? Inasmuch as he did it not unto one of the least of these, he did it not unto me. Depart from me, he cursed into everlasting fire. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we heard in the Gospel reading today of Jesus calling his first disciples. The summons is also beautifully written in the hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? by Gray Moore and John Bell. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you, and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind, and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare, should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you, and you in me? Will you let the blinded see, if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen, and admit to what I mean in you, and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you, and you in me. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for taking care of us, our families and friends. Thank you for all our blessings and for everything that you do for us. Protect our thoughts and our hearts and assist us in making the best decisions in everything we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, there are so many people in this world who are in need. Please show us how we can help. Use us, Lord, for your glory and to be a blessing for others. We pray that you would show us to use our resources to help others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift up all those who are facing illness today. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort and peace to their bodies. Calm their fears and let them experience the healing power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all injured people in war situations. We pray that they can receive the medical care and attention they need to heal and survive. 
We pray for medical facilities and hospitals not to be invaded or destroyed. We pray for the doctors and nurses to be able to do their job, their calling and administer aid we need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for when we lack faith to fill our hearts with renewed hope and trust in you. When things are not going our way, please remind us that your plans for us are better than what we think and want. Teach us not to let the pressure of the world get to us. Guide us to meditate and focus on you. Times are hard, Lord. Things are going from bad to worse. Our voices are small, but we pray to be heard in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. For I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be. For I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see your face. We love to hear your voice. Father, we love to see your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest. For we know we always can trust you. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Father, I want to speak the words that you are speaking to. Father, I want to love the ones that you will draw to you. For I know that I am one with you. For I know that I am one with you. We come now to the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary 
and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chain of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, 
and He in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which He gave for you, and His blood which He shed for you. Feed on Him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious, His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank You for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by Your grace in the body of Your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us always. Amen. So, dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Heaven reflect thy rays.
stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Spring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy 